Hello everyone! If you have not seen the trailer for some of the new exotic weapons coming in Forsaken, it is in the description, and I highly suggest you go watch it if you don't care about spoilers for weapons, and I suggest you watch it before this video, before I grab everyone's ankles and drag them back down to Earth. If you do care about exotic weapon spoilers, then I would leave this video right now. I thought it would be fun to give some preliminary thoughts on these weapons. We've done one or two of them in the past. I know it's not the greatest video idea because we only get about 5 to 10 seconds of footage per weapon and there's still a lot of speculation out there. But this is the closest thing that I'm ever going to get to doing a video like reviewing a card game's cards before an expansion release or whatever. So let's just see if I'm going to be right with anything on here. I just, I just really want to talk about new stuff, all right? I just want to talk about some new stuff. So let's do it. First up, we have Two-Tailed Fox. This is a rocket launcher that fires, you guessed it, two rockets at once, one void and one solar. This was shown as, I believe, Twin Rabbit in the Forsaken Vidoc. Now, in the clip, the two rockets search for two different targets. I don't know if tracking is built into the rocket intrinsically or if you need to aim it in order to lock on, but regardless, I think this will be more good than bad in PvP. Tracking has shown that it is potentially coming back to rocket launchers in Forsaken. The Gambit preview build that I've played multiple times had a tracking rocket, and it was pretty darn good in Gambit, so I suspect this will not be an exception if it does have tracking. In PvE, two rockets are always better than one, sure. But what we need to know is if each rocket does the same amount of damage as a current rocket, so you would be doing 2x rocket damage, or if the damage is split so that it's two halves of a rocket in terms of damage equaling one. Cluster bomb rockets are still the kings of damage in terms of rockets, and I don't recall this rocket having those. So for boss damage, it's probably out unless things change there. But otherwise, I think this will be a fun one, probably mid-tier in terms of exotics. Next, we have Titan Exotic Armor and Teus Wards, which reflect projectiles when sliding. Again, sounds very much like a PvP exotic, but I'm not sure how good or meta they will become due to the state of Syntheseps and ACD0 feedback fence. As we'll discuss in my final tier list, Synths and Fence are dominating the Crucible right now, and these boots seem much more like finesse or montage boots. I think it'll be difficult to do things very consistently with them, but when you do manage to actually hit that rocket reflect or whatever, it will be a very good moment for you, hence montage exotic. In PvE, same kind of deal. I do hope there is an opportunity to do something ridiculous with these, but I don't think these boots will be an exotic for all of the time. It will be for very specific things. Trinity Ghoul is an exotic bow that creates electrical storm arrows when you get a precision kill. Now, I think this is the bow that was being used in the Gambit preview build with a different name, and if I recall correctly, this thing fired three arrows and they all needed to crit, and that would proc the arc chain attack. I assume this is a somewhat revised version of that bow, maybe got some slight changes. Either way, the clip in the video is very exaggerated. One chain lightning attack takes out a whole bunch of dudes. Is that possible in the game right now? Yeah, totally. Sunshot can take out a lot of dudes in one shot. Graviton Lance. The thing is, that only really happens when you're fighting really underleveled garbage enemies. So I don't feel like that clip is going to be the norm. But if you're able to hit two or three kills back to back, now we're working with something with a little more potency. The fate of this bow and other weapons like it, I think will depend on how many situations we actually get that incentivizes add wave clear. The sixth coyote for hunters gets you double dodge. Not sure if this is a conditional dodge where you get the ability to dodge again for free after an initial dodge, or if it's literally just another charge. Knowing Bungie, it's probably just another charge. But like with all other hunter exotics, it needs to go up against Worm Husk Crown. Is Double Dodge going to be better than Worm Husk? For the average player, I think probably not. I think the average player is going to have a much safer time using Worm Husk for that health regen. But those who do want to use this are going to have 
potentially a lot of potential for melee-based plays since you can use gambler's dodge near enemies to instantly replenish your melee attack. That's more smokes, that's more disorients or health regen or throwing knives. I think this will be an upper level exotic, maybe not completely dominant, but definitely a viable contender for some for PvP. PvE wise, again, a lot of finesse style play potential here, but hunters already have some of the best PvE exotics in the game. So this would be a niche pick for certain play styles or maybe custom challenges. Malfeasance, the thorn looking weapon. Fire five shots into a target and they explode what looks like Cursed Thrall style, except it's a noticeably larger explosion compared to what we're used to seeing. Again, much like all of the weapons that generate explosions, this is going to be dependent on damage and how many situations we get that incentivize explosive weapons for ad clear, like I said earlier. But man, I'm hoping this is good because that explosion is large. Black Talon is an exotic sword with projectile capabilities. Swords right now are in a pretty rough spot. World Line Zero didn't really make too much of a splash when it came out, and it's been a while since we've had the power of Destiny 1 swords in our hands. Boltcaster was a D1 sword with projectiles, and while it paled in comparison to Raze Lighter and Dark Drinker for damage purposes, it had its moments in PvP. And I suspect Black Talon will have plenty of moments in Destiny 2 PvP, provided the damage is high enough on those projectiles. The projectile is Dawnblade-like in nature, according to the clip. Yeah, I think this exotic, for PvE at least, is pretty solely tied to how good swords are at any given moment. Pre-Forsaken, they're not that good. They need some form of a buff. An ammo buff would be nice, or a damage buff, I'll take whatever. If they get some form of a buff, then potential for this exotic sword goes up. I know a lot of people would really like to see swords return to some form of limelight in the heavy slot in Destiny 2. 1,000 voices, a beam weapon that explodes. I'm not sure how much I can really talk on this one yet as it seems really different compared to regular beam weapons. Coldheart had some early fame thanks to Callus, but I don't think it's anything revolutionary now, and Prometheus Lens, besides One Weekend, never really caught on as a contender in the PvE or PvP meta. The AoE effect of the beam didn't really make much of an impact. With this, as fun as it'll be to draw dicks on the ground and have them explode, I'd like to see the beam on target damage as well as the explosion damage. The video makes it look very impressive, but right now I'm a little skeptical based on the history of beam weapons. Chromatic Fire, an armor piece for Warlocks, I think it's Warlock, looked like a Warlock, gives you elemental explosions from precision kinetic kills. I'm probably missing something here. This sounds like a beefed up dragonfly effect. I wonder if you can change the elements, and if so, how easy it is to do that. It might be linked to your subclass. Primary weapon elemental damage has always been highly sought after, at least in D1. But in D2, I feel like with the weapon system getting changed, it won't be as big of a deal. Shielded targets are rare, and you normally just want to deal with them head on, not necessarily trying to proc elemental explosions near them and then hope the shield goes off. Elements aside, the explosion does look pretty large, but again, it's going to come down to actual damage. I think people are mainly going to be looking at Singe modifiers on strikes and whatnot to really take advantage of this exotic, and that's where I feel like it'll end up being most effective. This needs to contend against other Warlock exotics as well, but to be honest, besides a Luna faction for raiding, Crown of Tempest, and maybe Ophidian, I don't think Warlocks have many exotics that are 100% must-use exotics, at least to the scale that hunters have them. Wish Ender, the wall hack bow. Looks like aiming down sights lets you see pulses of enemies through walls and shots will overpenetrate. Based on how far away you can actually see enemies through walls, this seems absolutely insane to me as wall hack like abilities in Destiny have always been incredibly powerful in PvP. Now, if this bow does one-shot kill to the head, it'll actually be insane. Bows in the Gambit build 
were, I think, around 150 damage to the head, but there have been a lot of rumblings of time to kill changes based on some Game Informer stuff that has come out. I think Bows being a one-shot to the head would be a bit much, personally. Without that one-shot capability, you still have a massive damage lead on an unsuspecting opponent, and that certainly seems very, very strong to me. Now, whether or not Bows will end up being very strong in the meta, that remains to be determined. Finally, you guessed it, Ace of Spades is back for Forsaken. Reloading after a kill grants extra damage bullets. Pretty sure that's what Kill Clip already does, so I assume the effect will be more potent than that, whether it's loading more bullets into the gun or having stronger damage. It also looks like it has some form of explosive on a kill, to absolutely nobody's surprise. Kill Clip. It's a very good perk. Very good perk in the game. If Ace of Spades' effect is stronger, which I hope it will be, then this will be a very good hand cannon. This versus Midnight Coup... A little tough to tell right now. I would really like to know how much of a damage boost, how long does it last, how many bullets does it affect, because Midnight Coup can get up to 40% bonus damage without reloading, and it has Outlaw so that when you do need to reload, you can keep it rolling as long as you get a kill right away. Need a little bit more info on this one, but my guess is that it'll be much better than it is worse. That is all that was shown. Looks like there were a few more exotics shown at the end of the video, but they were only shown visually. No information on them, except for one of them, but we only know that because Game Informer did a reveal on one of those weapons. If you want to check that out, feel free to visit their stuff. All in all, very impressive looking weapons and effects. Definitely got me hyped up a bit to check them all out in that original video, but I know how Bungie does promotional material. And sometimes you got to keep some things in check. I don't want to keep them in check. I want them to be insane. But you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, positive rating would be nice. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.